and I'm going to go ahead and set it right in the middle. Then I can put it anywhere and, and project additional surfaces and measure from, if I wanted to measure down so far from this top ridge, I could project that ridge and then measure down to a specific point. But I'm going to use the big green dot or the middle of that surface as my center point location. So I'm going to put a hole right in that spot. We'll hit finish sketch. So we've now used work planes to locate geometry so that way we can build a new work plane based on that geometry on that angled surface. We'll now use the hole tool and use and create a hole but this particular hole I don't want it to go all the way in I want this to be a blind hole so it's not going to go through all it's going to go based on a distance or a depth now we know that overall this part is about five inches and you know, we said that it was about uh, f four inches tall and about five inches across so the size hole that I'm going to need, oh, it probably needs to be threaded too, which means that I better choose the tape, the tapped hole, taped, the tapped hole to create the appropriate threading. So I'm going to go ahead and choose, and this is a pretty, pretty good size um, object that we need to hold in here. So we're going to make it a half inch. With, the, with a lot of use, I think I'm going to change it from 13 threads per inch, which is coarse, to a fine thread, which is 20. And so what, what will happen here is that this particular hole, based on the center point, and I'll go ahead and put the center point in, is going to have, okay, that looks pretty good because you can see now how deep the hole is going into our part that's going to give us enough threading um, to hold whatever we decide to thread in as the new arm for the slot machine we'll probably also have to create a hole or two through the center so we can mount this piece but more than likely there's a shaft that goes through here and so we might have to actually just drill a hole through the center also. And we'll go ahead and choose OK. So we're going to make it a half inch unified national fine thread. One inch deep actually worked out pretty well. So now if you look zoom up, you can actually see that there's a bitmap of threading. It's not a true thread that was cut. There was not an actual helix of cut here. So if you plan on prototyping this part in a prototype machine, you will need to tap that hole um, with a standard tap if you want the actual threads to be in there. If you want to manufacture threads, then you have to use the coil command along with a cutting tool to cut the actual threads into the model. The reason why it's only a bitmap is because when you use helixes and then cut threads, the amount of surfaces goes exponential. And so the idea there is to minimize the size of the drawing, bitmaps are applied. All right, so what we're gonna do next is we're gonna work on the top surface. And that top surface, we're going to go ahead and put a hole for the shaft, and then we're going to put two separate holes for uh, locating um, or holding this particular connector onto the shaft. And we could even, if we wanted to, put a set screw hole in. You know, there's a lot of different options that we can work on at this point. So the next thing that we have to do is create a new sketch, and we're going to put a sketch on the top surface here. So that top surface, um, I'm going to go ahead and use the point command to create two more points. Well, I want those points to be opposite the original hole. And we're going to have to dimension those points in. So we definitely need to dimension to the center, and so that way they are equal in distance. And so we can make them 0.65 in distance. 
Now I can also dimension those to the center mark. And notice that I'm not getting any particular horizontal dimensions. What that indicates to me is that they are specifically on that center line and do not need any dimensions to make them centered um, or equal on that horizon. Technically it does say that I need two more dimensions for these. But notice that I'm not getting any vertical dimensions that, that are available for me to dimension to. So we're going to leave it at that. If you, get a ver if you do this and you get the ability to do a vertical dimension, make it zero onto that point um, to locate it. I could apply like a horizontal constraint. Um, I can't use collinear because it's not a flat surface, but I could say that these two are horizontally constrained, and I can horizontally constrain those to there, and it says that it's now fully constrained. Perfect. We'll finish the sketch, and we're going to go ahead and put in two more holes. Now these holes will go through all the part. Um, these are going to be through holes, so we don't want them threaded. We actually want it to be a clearance hole because the screws will go through this. We'll also make it recessed so people don't get hurt. And the diameter of the screws, a quarter inch is a pretty good sized screw, but we are going through about five inches of length. So um, setting up and notice that it's 0.26 instead of 0.25 and that gives you gives us the the necessary clearance of that hole um, three quarters of an inch is pretty beefy for a, a quarter inch hole I may well it depends on what we're doing if we're going to use a socket head three quarters of an inch is appropriate if we're going to use a cap screw, which is a socket head cap screw, we can probably get away with 0 0.50 as the uh, diameter of the hole itself. I'll then select the two centers. So we'll both have holes all the way through the part in that way. This will not interfere with the handle hole initially. And we'll go ahead and choose OK. So now we've got the through holes to hold this on. The last step we're going to show you today is the ability to um, take parts from the content center. So we're going to hit the return button. Now what the return button does is take us out of our part model and moves us in back into the assembly. So we're going out of the handle connector back up to the assembly. From the place button we're going to go ahead and place from the contents center fasteners. So I'm going to go ahead and place fasteners and you can see that it, and when we get in here basically every type of fastener you need is here. We're going to go with bolts and under bolts we're going to do socket head and we're going to do a, a socket head cap screw. And so there's a variety of different socket head cap screws. What we're going to do is a hexagon socket cap screw in inches. Now some of these like DIN, those are German based fasteners. So again, and JIS is Japanese based fasteners. So be aware that what we're looking for primarily in English based, you're going to be able to read the actual name associated with it. So we're going to go ahead and choose these. So we'll double click. And what that will do is that will bring from the database all the um, geometry necessary to create this particular uh, cap screw. Now, don't worry that it's too big or too small. The first idea is just to make sure that it's the right item that we want. We want it to do a quarter inch. and the length. Well, I'm probably going to go with like four and a quarter initially. Can we change it? Yeah. We're also going to make it f uh, a fine thread and choose apply. So 
So now it's asking me to apply this on my part. I'm going to pick two because I need two of these. And then I'm going to choose cancel because I'm finished with inserting my cap screws. But within the content center, everything from shaft parts to tubing and piping information to any type of fastener, um, washers, rivets, pins, nuts, um, basic features, meaning components, slots, square tubes, toruses, it's in here as part of the content center. The last step is that we need to insert these socket heads into the assembly. So we're going to go ahead and constrain it and we're going to use the insert tool. Now the key on the insert tool is selecting the right surface to insert. So for the socket head cap screw we're going to select the outer edge of the base of the head because that needs to go into the base of the counter bore. And we'll do that for the other one too. Oh, cancel. So let's try this again. I kept picking points and it didn't work. Here, here, apply, cancel. Congratulations. Try that again. Constrain, insert, outer edge, inner edge, apply, cancel. Let's look at the front view. Perfect. Screws, the screw length is exactly what we're looking for. Um, we've now made a hole for another um, component to be screwed in to hold as we uh, pull the slot machine. We might find that this is too small. We might need to go to a three-quarter inch diameter because it's going to look better. And part of the design process is making sure that things look good. So this pretty much wraps up our uh, design of the day, which is work planes and content center. Have a great day.